Lisa here and today I have a really cool tutorial project for you guys. If you see my last video, you know that I engraved the Eldering logo on 20 journals. And this video is going to be more about that engraving and cover process. I want to show you guys how I make the cover, how I wrap the cover and how I engrave it. Because Afira was so kind enough to send me one of their laser engravers to do all these cool projects with. So I wanted to show you guys one of these projects step by step so maybe you get inspired as well. A small disclaimer before we start, I did spray my left thumb a little while ago. Uh, it's not my dominant hand and it's mainly healed by now. But if you do see me do something weird with it, that's why ignore it all is good so without further ado let's get right into the video let's go so i took the liberty to already make 15 signatures of three of my handmade papers each these are dyed with coffee but i didn't do anything else special with them so of course before we can get to the cover we have to make the signatures into a text block for this project we are doing a medieval side binding again my way so first i'm just prepping the holes using this template repeating this process 15 times Once I've done that, I put the stack aside in a way that I can easily flip the bottom signature towards me, but somehow I was really struggling to figure out how that would be. I get confused sometimes. Eventually I got it, I think. I am also cutting four pieces of string and attaching those to the bottom of the signature with washi tape. An extra step I also do is waxing my thread. I try to keep my journals as vegan friendly as possible and most linen threads come pre-waxed with beeswax. So what I do instead is I get unwaxed linen thread and then melt my own rapeseed wax into little molds from advent calendars so I can pull the thread past these melts to wax it and make it easier to bind with. So once I've done that I can actually get to binding. I have this ridiculous thing where I refuse to start another piece of thread during binding as long as I can avoid it, so I always work with unmanageably long pieces. So the first few signatures are always so hard for me and require a lot of detangling, as you may see. All because I'm too stubborn to tie a few extra knots in the middle of the process. Sometimes I don't understand myself. I take my time binding as it's quite a large book and I enjoy this process a lot. Once I bound my last signature, I tie it off and admire my work. Look at this big boy. I actually did a pretty neat job, it looks like a nice functional text block. Now I want to curve the spine and I use a mallet for this. You really don't need a mallet in my case, I just think it's fun. A mallet helps when you have a text block stuck in a press, my signatures are actually quite movable. Because we are not adding any cardboard on the spine, we need to strengthen it, and for that I'm using bookbinder's mesh and a lot of glue. The mesh is flexible but hardens with the glue, keeping the spine protected and in shape. I try my best to keep as much of the spine shapes as I can. Once it's dried a little bit, I am adding my cover. For this I am using 2mm recycled grey board, but you can use whatever cardboard you can find. I poked holes where the strings are and half a centimeter or so from the side. I then pulled the strings through the holes. This method of adding covers is extremely secure and you can also do this with other binding methods where you can just add a ribbon in between stitches along the spine. I even saw people just glue the ribbon on the spine after, as long as you have little tentacles that you can pull through both sides of the cover. Once you have the cardstock in place, you're going to want to attach the string to it as flat as possible. So if you have ribbon, you can instantly glue it down, but if you have string, you're going to want to pull those apart. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm separating the strands of each string, 
then taking those strands apart even more until it's all fluff. At this point I can glue them down pretty flat. And you want to do the same thing on the other side of course. Before closing the book, you should add some baking or wax paper in between to protect your precious paper from glue. Then close it, put something heavy on top and let it dry. Once it's dry, we can start wrapping the journal. This is what I'll be using, a purple grayish piece of fabric that I ironed already. You can now get your journal and peel off the wax paper. This is always so satisfying. If it doesn't peel off easily, that's a sign the glue hasn't fully dried yet. If it's dry, it's so good. You can reuse these papers, by the way. Now you basically already have a functioning journal, but we have to make it pretty. I cut this piece very rough, so I'm going to trim it to size real quick, leaving enough space on all sides to wrap it around. Then I start wrapping with the spine, adding glue and spreading it out evenly. I then drape over the fabric, making sure the correct side is facing up. I pull the fabric tight, revealing the shapes of the spine. Then I glue down one side, making sure to cover the entire thing. If we are going to be engraving, parts of the fabric are going to be burnt away. So if not every single piece of fabric is glued down to the cardboard, parts can fall off that you don't want to. The glue I'm using is not my usual glue and it's a lot more liquidy than I anticipated, so I added a little too much, which is also why I just keep spreading it around. Then you just pull the fabric tight over it, pressing down a little and then flipping over to the other side to repeat that. Once you get to this point, you can either let it dry a little under something heavy or continue. That's between you and your glue. I'm now going to cut the fabric in very specific places so I can then wrap it exactly around the cardboard. I cut the spine separate from the rest, so I cut between the cardboard and the spine on each side. And then I cut each corner at an angle, leaving a little bit of fabric on the exact corner spot. Once you've got that, you can now easily glue everything over like so. Try to keep it neat, but don't worry too much as it will be covered by an end page at the end. For the little spine piece, I do something a little controversial probably. You could make a band here, but that's a lot of extra work, so instead I cut it short and then roll it behind itself to the height of the cardboard next to it, and then glue it down to the spine. And then it will look actually quite flush like so. And now you repeat these steps for the other sides of course. And again, don't forget to add wax paper to protect from the glue. Then leave it to dry under something heavy while we go and design our cover. So I jumped into Illustrator and got to work. For this design, I knew I wanted something celestial that would also be easy to paint after it was engraved. So I decided on moon phases. It's not very original, but it's easy for me to make as I haven't used Illustrator in so long and basically have no idea what I'm doing. So please don't judge the way I decided to make this. We got there in the end and that's the most important. Now we have our design ready, let's actually take a look at the laser. So this is the box that Ophira sent me. They sent me the Ophira Laser 2 and it looks all so fancy. Ooh, protective goggles, that means serious business. I'm a little scared but this should be very beginner friendly and looking at all the pieces laid out, I'm sure I can manage. After staring at the manual a little too long, I put the whole thing together. There are not that many pieces and it's generally not that complicated, but you just have to understand the instructions. And I got there in the end. Now to attach the actual laser. Ooh, so satisfying. And 
I found that that piece comes off. And it's magnetic. So making sure the laser is attached all properly and my safety goggles are ready, we can start the engraving process. I mapped that on a journal where I wanted the design to go because I cannot eyeball that unfortunately and I line it up as straight as possible with the laser. Here's my design in the program, I did do some test runs so I know roughly what settings I want it to be on, you can all see that here. I connect with the laser, very important. And then I press the frame button on the bottom so it shows me the outline of the design so I can make sure it's in the correct spot. I wasn't happy with it so I move it a little and then run it again. Now I'm happy with it so I carefully take the tape off without moving anything else just so we have a nicer shot. And then I can just press play and the engraving begins. This has obviously sped up quite a bit, but it's so satisfying to see your design come to life like this. You can engrave many different materials by the way, so I can make some very creative covers. Please drop your ideas. Once the front is done, I flip it over and add the Nevermind Paper logo very small into the back with less intensity. Here's what it looks like after I brush the ash away, totally with the little brush they provided because I definitely did not misplace it. So now it just needs the finishing touches, the design needs to be painted gold, and we need to add end pages. For the end pages, I am not using my own paper. I feel like they need to be as sturdy as possible, and with all that glue, this is safer. They really tie the whole journal together by hiding the gap between text block and cover. And then here it is, the finished journal. It's such a thick boy. I love the engraving, it looks great. I also love the paper, I still can't believe I made every single one of those by hand. I unfortunately don't have any more book corners, but I have some coming in soon, so I most likely will add them later, because I do think they will add a nice touch with the gold moons and all. What do you think? So yeah, there you go. That is how I made this moon face journal. It's honestly probably one of the thickest journal, if not the thickest journal I've made. I absolutely love this type of binding and I think it turned out great. The gold with this color cover is just amazing. And oh, the logo on the back is just adorable. If you're gonna inspire to try engraving yourself, there will be a link in the description to the engraver. Thank you so much to Ophiro for sending me the engraver and thank you to you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comment them down below. I try to answer as much as I can. If you're curious to see how this one will turn out with the book corners, make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Also, comment down below what you think I should engrave next. So, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye! Hello, where's the button? Okay, it's okay.